Leonardo Silvares from Unirio, and the title of his talk is On the Essential Spectrum of the Laplacian and the Drift to the Laplacian. Please. Well, first, I'd like to thank the organizer for the opportunity of talk here about my work on the essential spectrum of the Laplacian and the Drift to the Laplacian. I beg you a little patience because I'm very nervous, but, well, uh, first, I begin with some, some definitions. Uh, we define the Laplacian as the trace of the Hessian, of a, a smooth function. Uh, we take the L2 space of the square integrable uh, functions over a uh, manifold M. And well, the, in respect to this inner product here of the L2, the Laplacian is a, can be extend, uniquely extended to a self-adjoint operator. Well, we define the spectrum of the, this operator. Well, we say that a, a number lambda belongs to this, this spectrum of the minus Laplacian. If it inverse, its inverse does not exist, or it's not, not bounded. Uh, we can split this, this spectrum on the discrete spectrum, which is formed by the points, the, the lambda, for which the, the that are eigenvalues, eigenvalues of finite multiplicity. And the essential spectrum is the spectrum of the Laplacian minus the discrete uh, spectrum. Well, since the Laplacian, the minus Laplacian, is a symmetric and non-negative operator, we have the spectrum contained on the positive real numbers. Well, it's a, we, uh, considering, we are considering here before the manifold with the metric G and the measure associated to this, to the volume form. We can take now the, the measure with respect to which we are making the, the integrals here. We can take this measure weighted by this density, where F is a small function. Well, and we're, with this respect to this measure, we can define uh, a new Laplacian is given this way. It's the original uh, Laplacian minus uh, differential part here. And we, with respect to this measure, we can have, we can define a L2F space of functions of square, the square integrable functions with respect to this measure, this weight of measure, and we have an associated inner product. Well, and this Laplacian F, the drifted Laplacian, is associated to the, the, this inner product the same way the Laplacian, the original Laplacian, was associated to the original inner product. And the same way, uh, this Laplacian F is a self-adjoint operator on this, this space. And we define, the, the, in a similar way, the spectrum, the discrete spectrum, and the essential spectrum of this operator. Mm. We have the uh, uh, natural object. Here is the Bakri-Emery rich tensor, F who is defined by the original rich, rich curvature, plus the Hessian of the function f. And uh, this annotation, we say that this rich f is greater than key times the metric if we have this inequality. Well, mm, uh, first example, who shows the, the uh, Intrinsic difference between the spectrum of the Laplacian and the drift of the Laplacian 
is the Gaussian soliton. We take the Rn with the usual metric and this density, this measure. So we have the essential spectrum of the Laplacian given by the positive real numbers and the spectrum of the F Laplacian or the drift Laplacian is discrete and we, we can by the on a, a very simple way a uh, base of uh, engine functions. Well, our first result is when we have a n, a non-compact complete manifold n, with this density function n f, the density function is moved such that which f is greater than zero is not non-negative. And the, this f is sublinear, has sublinear growth. So the essential spectrum of this drifted Laplacian is the positive real numbers. Mm. Well, an example is the gradient, gradient stage rich soliton, where we have this, this condition. So rich f is equals to zero, zero. This is the definition of rich f. So we have rich f equals to zero. Um, we have here the limit of f under r equals to a greater than zero. So it does not satisfy our hypothesis. And in this case, we have this essential spectrum. This shows that this hypothesis is sharp. Well, uh, our this result, our first result, is essentially an analytic result. But to prove this result, we, have, we get some interesting volume growth and the case estimates. Uh, well, this is the geometric part of the, the work. Well, mm, now we prove that the volume of the, the manifold of the, uh, a ball center in a point does not grow exponentially when the, with the growth of R. In the same way, this volume, the volume of the manifold minus a, a, a ball centered on a fixed point, does not decrease exponentially. So we have uh, the, the volume of the manifold under the hypothesis of theorem one. The volume does not grow exponentially and does not decay exponentially under this definition. Mm. Well, another result we have, now changing the, the hypothesis of rich F non-negative, we replace by uh, a half G. Now we are saying that the rich F is strictly positive, and replacing the, the condition under F by this one. Uh, in first, in theorem one, the F has sublinear growth. Now we can have some kind of square growth to, to f. So under these conditions, the essential spectrum of the Laplacian, not the drifting Laplacian, the original Laplacian is the positive real numbers. This is quite interesting because we have a, a condition uh, under f, uh, f we insert into the problem, and we have some conclusion about the original Laplacian. Mm, and we can extend this result by taking weaker hypothesis on the, on the manifold. This hypothesis does not need more to hold on the whole manifold, but only on an end, at some end of the manifold. Uh, first example uh, on which we can apply our result 
is a gradient shrink soliton. Uh, the, the extension spectrum of this gradient shrink soliton has been proved to be the positive real numbers by Lu Zhu and Nelia Lu, Charalambos Lu, by direct, uh, they have attacked directly the problem, but we can have the same result as consequence of our theorem three or four. Um, another, another example, we take, the, we take the Gaussian soliton, Rn, uh, with the usual metric and this density, this measure. We have the hypothesis under which being satisfied. And uh, we can think this Gaussian soliton as this product with this metric. And using our result, we can change the density, this density, or this density is the same thing. Uh, we can change the metric by any other metric, metric uh, with a concave function. Fine. Well, so I talk about previous results on this direction. Well, uh, first, Escobar, Escobar and Freire, and the Tang, they have proved supposing the sectional curvature non negative, and that the manifold has a soul such that it's a soul such that its exponential appli application the uh, normal bundle of this manifold is a diffeomorphism, so we have the result. Well, supposing the manifold with a pole and rich non negative, Chen, Lu, and after later, Li, they prove the same result. Now, uh, let's think that now we have some kind of smoothness on the, the manifold, on the exponential map. Here, they suppose the manifold has a soul, and here, the manifold has a pole. Well, this condition of the smoothness can be circumvented by using an uh, approximation, a uh, smooth approximation of the distance. And uh, this approximation can be taken uh, as close as the, the, the gist, original distance as we want under certain technical conditions. I will not talk about them. And using this technique of uh, approximating the distance, Wang and Lu Zhu, they have proved that the essential spectrum of the Laplacian is the possible real numbers on LP space. Well, to prove our results, and it was basically the same techniques, techniques these previous authors have used, we use an extended version of the wheel criterion for a, a characterization of a point of the essential spectrum. Well, this result is an extension of a result by Nelia, by Nelia Charalambos and Jitin Lu. So, I have a, give you an idea of the proof of our first theorem. Well, uh, to prove that any positive, any non-negative real number belongs to the essential spectrum, I have to construct to build a, a sequence of functions satisfying this. So, the technique here is to take a test function times this exponential. Well, the second derivative of this exponential is lambda times itself. So, it's natural that this will be it's close to zero. So, uh, we have to, to guarantee that this quotient is arbitrarily small. Well, the numerator can be controlled by uh, we take this 
the function such that here its model is 1, here it's 0, 0, and here it's smooth. Well, and we we control this numerator by c times epsilon volume f is the volume calculated uh, with respect to the measure with that density and we have this mm, b. So the numerator can be controlled from above by this for some constant c. And the, the denominator can be controlled by this. So we have the numerator controlled by the volume of this ball. And uh, here we have x, y, y plus r, x minus r. We have the numerator controlled by this ball and the denominator controlled by this. So we have to compare the volumes of the ball of radius y plus r plus 1 and y. Why? <laughs> so uh, we need some results on the growth of this, the volume of these balls. We can't, the, this volume can't be, can't grow exponentially. Because if, if, if it grew exponentially, we have this, this volume uh, always greater than this one. So we have to prove this estimate on the growth of the, the volume. Well, uh, but the volume can be, fin can be finite, so we have si similar controls on the, on the numerator and denominators, and we have to prove that the volume does not decay exponentially. And, well, the, the proof of this, the, of the estimates on the, the, the volume decay is easily done by comparing the volume of this, the volume forms uh, of a ball near to the fixed point P and a, a distant one. Uh, we use it here, Bochner uh, equality and uh, the hypothesis on the, the F. Well, time is running fast. Uh, our next results, on our ne next results, we prove the same, uh, we prove that the essential spectrum of the Laplacian is the non-negative real numbers. And we, now we replace the condition of the rich F being, being non-negative by this, being ex ex extremely positive. And now we have, uh, we, we allow the F to have some kind of square growth. Mm. And we, have, we need some uh, equivalent estimates on the volume growth and decay. In this case, the volume, it's not finite. And in our uh, last theorem, we can prove the same result, now taking weaker uh, hypothesis on the, on the M. We just need this conditions under F and their curvature to hold on some end of the manifold. By an end here, we mean the nanocompact connected component of the exponential uh, of the tangent space at a point except uh, above, minus above. Well, and we have similar results. We have now the, that 
the volume of this end does not grow exponentially and does not decay exponentially. And the proof is just the, the same we have to the theorem one. Mm. Well, now I have some, uh, well, uh, under the hypothesis of theorem four, we have that the volume has at least linear volume growth. So the, the volume can, in this case, cannot be finite. But on this new theorem, with this, the weaker, this weaker hypothesis, we can have an explicit example on which the volume can be finite. So the theorem five is more interesting than the theorem four. This hypothesis really uh, can be applied to new, new cases. So I think I have talked too fast, and this is all. Thanks. <laughs>